successful non-conference season in 22 years. Dartmouth turns its sights to Ivy League foes with Harvard in town for the conference opener. For the big green tonight, Ian Sister, James Foy, Brendan Barry, Chris Knight, and Idris Jackson. The starting five for David McLaughlin. Harvard starts Chris Lewis, Justin Bassey, Christian Juzang, Corey Johnson, and Danilo Juricic. It's Dartmouth and Harvard. Hope you enjoy it. Inside lead arena, a great crowd. Pep band here. It's going to be fun. Festive atmosphere. Lots of pressure tonight on the bigs for the big green. Chris Knight and, of course, Adrice Jackson getting the nod in the starting lineup against Chris Lewis. He is a man in the post. Leading scorer and leading shot blocker. Leads the Ivy League in shot blocks. Tommy Amaker, the head coach at Harvard. Three-pointer doesn't go. We're expecting to see a lot of threes launched by the team in white tonight. Good closeout defensively for the Big Green there. They rotated to help Lewis offensively in the post. Chris Knight might have had an opportunity at the first Dartmouth three-point field goal. They take a lot of them. Barry is the nation's leader in terms of made threes. Inside Knight, and it's... No good. And again, Harvard, we saw last year the disciplined defense really making Dartmouth work hard half court. Well, you got to get some shots in transition if you can against this Harvard defense. They're so strong defensively. Probably going to keep teams all year long around 60 points, Bob. And to get down in the shot clock there is not what you need for Dartmouth. It was a good look, though. So you'll take that all night. Harvard for the lead in the first basket of the game is Christian Juzang, the junior from Tarzana, California. And like we've seen all year, all for the first 12 games, pressure on Brendan Berry in the backcourt. Harvard 6-6, six six, Dartmouth with that terrific 9-7 non-conference slate. Big Green also 6-1 in this gym. Only a near miss to Quinnipiac. Jackson on the drive gets fouled. Going the other way. It's going to be a Matt Levine, the official on this side, calls the foul on Adrice Jackson on the drive. Gary Pacino and Matt Smith also wearing the striped shirts here at Lead Arena. That's a tough one. You don't want Adrice getting in foul trouble. He had the kickout pass for a wide open three in the corner. Got to land on two and make the nice kickout pass in that situation. Lewis inside working against Jackson. Maybe he has to give up a little bit after just committing the foul. Lewis for the bucket. Yeah, he had to give way, and he couldn't be really aggressive defensively there, but it looked like Lewis got away with a little extra step. A little slide of the pivot foot. Juzang picks up Brendan Barry, and now a nice cut inside Sister. There'll be a Harvard foul that puts Ian Sister at the line. Justin Bassey first for Harvard. Harvard is 6-6 six and six overall. Including three and one at home, three and five on the road. Dartmouth, nine and seven overall, six and one at home, two and five away from Lead Arena. Great pump fake and got the foul there. Ian's a good free throw shooter. One of the things Coach Amaker told me when I talked to him before the game was he wanted to guard both lines. He wanted to guard the three point line and he wanted to guard the foul line. And the meaning of that is he didn't want Dartmouth going to the free throw line a lot tonight. And they've gotten to the free throw line two minutes, 15 seconds in. And I'm sure Coach Amaker is going to say, no more of that. Stay on your feet. So Stair misses the second, only a sixth miss of the year, 37 out of 43. The Harvard lead is three early on. Lewis inside, blocked inside by Aaron Rye, who checks into the game. The youngster from Markham, Ontario, has been terrific in the defensive side for Dartmouth. And coming off the bench, count it, and a foul on Johnson. Chris Knight, the sophomore from Madison, Wisconsin. Well, Will Emery not playing tonight with a stomach ailment. Aaron Rye is going to have to step up big. You saw him do it defensively, but Chris Knight in the rotation with Aaron Rye and Adrice Jackson. I think a good job by Coach McLaughlin getting Adrice out of the game, calm down after the one foul. Three for Chris Knight, and we're tied at four. 17-21 left in the first half. Feet inside, that's Lewis, travel, Dartmouth ball. 
Yeah, he definitely traveled in that situation. It was a very nice call by Matt Levine. Both of these teams last played 10 days ago, January 2nd. Dartmouth that night lost in Vermont, 73-59. They had their worst shooting night of the year. Same night, Harvard was at North Carolina, lost to the 15th-ranked Tar Heels by 20. Knight has lost his dribble. Needs a helper. It'll be Barry from behind. Oh, down to 10 on the clock. Sestera has no good shot there. In fact, it's blocked by Bassey. He'll try again. No good. Rye, one more chance. I think it would have counted. I think it would have beaten the buzzer. Well, this is what worries me. They're doing a nice job extending the pressure into the full court, guarding Brendan Barry down here. And, you know, he's got to go 90 feet against pressure. By the time they get down here in the offensive side of the court, they only have about 20 seconds, 15 seconds to get set. And what was really key here is right at the end of that play, they called a foul on Harvard's Christian Juzang. Wow. And Dartmouth not only doesn't lose the possession, they get the ball here, but they give it right up. That's another situation with the turnover. You have gotta come in and land on two feet and make a solid pass. Harvard swept the big green last year. On its way to a share of the Ivy League title. They lost in the championship game to Penn. No for Juricic. Big Green coming out with the ball. Barry in the front court. Something quick here. Knight with a cutter, and it's Sister inside. That counts. I think Coach Amaker wanted the travel on Sister. Good help defense by the Crimson Tide. And a Chan check foul on Brendan Barry. They're going to call the game really tight. That could be a factor here. Turn back at lead arena in Hanover. Tommy Amaker, the head coach at Harvard, has had a lot of success with Dartmouth. Second fastest to 200 wins in the Ivy League. 217 wins as the Harvard coach. 11 and he years. He set a standard. Yeah, 11 years with Harvard. He's 18 and four against the Big Green. Previously had uh, been the head man at Seton Hall in Michigan. Winning his coach in Harvard history. A Duke grab. And there's Harvard for the lead. Up top, Christian Juzang with his second field goal. I was watching Christian shoot before the game started, and he must have made 18 consecutive threes at one point in time. He was on fire. Apparently he still is. Freshman West Slacker at 11 in the game for Dartmouth right now. To stare in the corner, Barry looks for three, doesn't get it. Brendan on the year has made 54 three-point field goals. That was on 104 tries coming in. Well, you have basically four smalls and one big for the Dartmouth Big Green in their offense or on the floor against the Crimson Tide. So, I mean, obvious height advantage for the Crimson Tide in this game. They've got to really do a good job, the Big Green, of maximizing their possessions. Sister for three, and that's good for the Big Green. Getting our first look here at freshman Noah Kirkwood from Ottawa, Robert Baker Jr., Henry Walsh Jr. are all in the game for Harvard. Sister already up to six points. Dartmouth leads nine to seven. Juzang will be guarded by Barry. Up top, Bassey is the assignment for Ian Sister. Welsh won't shoot it from that far out. Trying to work his way in, gets a hook, and it goes. That is a great move. And you know, the Big Green are so worried about some of the three-point shooting. Juzang's out there, of course. And the three-time rookie of the week is out there as well. Noah Kirkwood. Noah Kirkwood, yeah. Into the lane comes Slacker, and it's going the other way. Freshman from Oak Park, California, with a foul. Against teams like this with great defensive discipline, you're not going to make too many moves where you dribble from outside the arc to the front of the rim and get away with it. And that's a great charge drawn. Adrice Jackson back in for the Big Green. will give Chris Knight a breather. 14-14 left in the first half in Hanover, New Hampshire. The Ivy opener. 
These teams will play again two weeks from today at Levides Pavilion in Cambridge. Baker, three. They can shoot it. Well, this is a team that has played without Seth Towns and Bryce Aiken. The talented Towns Jr. not expected to play tonight. We might see Aiken. Possession arrow to Harvard. They lead 12-9 here in the first half. Great and hustle. The two, the two names you bring up real quick. Aiken and Towns combined for 30 points per game for Harvard last year. Harvard had virtually everybody back from last year's team that went to the Ivy Championship game. They were pretty highly regarded coming in, and they still may be really good. Yeah, we have player of the year and the rookie of the year, having not played yet. Rio has to get into the game now for Harvard. So Amaker using his bench pretty uh, significantly here in the early part of the game. That's Kirkwood who's guarded over there by James Foy. Tapped and it uh, goes into the backcourt but off yep. Dartmouth and then a foul. Harvard and, and Dave McLaughlin, I think at a point here, Harvard touched the ball in on their side of the court in the D. I agree. And then the momentum carried him into the backcourt. Should have been a backcourt violation. They didn't call it. Robert Baker definitely dribbled the ball into the backcourt, had his hands on the ball in the forecourt. The officials didn't see it. Right, it's fine if he just lets it go, and then he, right. he reels it in in the backcourt. Bounce pass inside is for Welch. Hook shot over Jackson, no good. Foy will lead Dartmouth the other way. James been probably the most improved player from last year to this year on this big green squad. Junior from Hamilton, Mass. One of four averaging in double figures. There were five averaging in double figures for a while. Jackson had been at 10. Slipped back to 9.4, but he's now made his first bucket. And with Chris Knight out of the game, they got to go into Idris, and he's got to make them pay. And no shot of foul on the drive. 12-11 Harvard. A lot of fouls early here. Fans jeering, saying let them play. Already five on Dartmouth, three on Harvard. Two on Aaron Rye, so he'll come out in favor of Ian Sestere. Um, and it actually was not, uh, they, they, Aaron Rye is looking over at the bench like, didn't you want me to come out? And instead, Wes Slackard went out. Here we go. This is the way it was supposed to have been. And they're going to have to change their matchup here. As Ian Sestere got about seven seconds on the bench, came back in. So Slackard is the one who stays in. Rye goes to the bench with two fouls. Spencer Friedman now playing for Harvard. A freshman from California and a drive for Kirkwood for two points and Harvard leads 14-11. He's a freshman. And a good one. That is very scary. One of the top newcomers in the Ivy League. Adrice Jackson wants three. Didn't get it, Kirkwood comes down with a rebound. No team shooting well in the early going. Welch, Jackson commits the foul. And now Rye has two and Jackson has two. Well, Henry Welch was about 12, 13 feet away from the basket. Gave the up fake to Idris, he went for it. You gotta stay on the floor because if Welsh makes a shot from 12 feet, you shake his hand, give him five on the way down. Nice shot, Henry. But you don't get your second foul in that situation. Night for Jackson for the big green, the substitution. Harvard has not had a good start to the season from the charity stripe, just 64.1%. Only 35% from three coming in, and they look pretty confident shooting the three. So Stare with a rebound of the second miss. Harvard by four at 15-11. So Stare, boy, Brendan Barry can't get the basketball. And we'll have another possession where Dartmouth will go under 10 before they get a shot off. Foy back out. Slackert, free throw line, good. Great move by Wes. Got the defender to fly by. 
two-point game. How about that drive and pass? Noah Kirkwood takes the pass from Rio. Haskett for the Crimson Bucket. And they didn't get the help defense again. Second time in a, about three possessions, they didn't get over help-wise. Knight. Slackered again on the baseline looking for a basket. And Knight somehow able to get oh. in all those maroon jerseys. Dartman's going to come away with the ball. Slackered out of the corner, no good. Knight, can he get that rebound? No, stepped out of bounds. Now bring us to a timeout here at Lead Arena in Hanover, and it's Harvard by four, the early going of the Ivy League opener for the Crimson and the Big Green. This is the Ivy League on Nesson. David McLaughlin is the head coach of the Dartmouth College Big Green, hired after serving a couple of years as an assistant at Northeastern. Very successful coach at Division II Stonehill College. And he has Dartmouth headed in the right direction. Yeah, I really like what he's done. You look at them coming into this game, 6-6. Six and six. They've responded well. They had three losses in a row earlier in the first part of the season and then came back. They've won five of their last six. And the young men are playing very well for him. They respond to him come out of the locker room in the second half strong for him. I like what he's doing on the sideline for the Big Green. Harvard ball off the timeout. Mason Forbes 21 on the floor for Harvard. Tuzang had a couple of field goals early. They got a screen to come back to Bassey, go inside and a hoop no good for Forbes but it's a Harvard rebound at the buzzer. It is a shot clock violation, Kirkwood unable to get it off in time. Well, if you took a 30-second clip of team defense, that was a perfect example. A-plus by Dartmouth there. Great rotations, good help. And you just get the feeling that every possession really matters in this kind of an atmosphere. And you can see by the look on everyone's faces, they know it. Knight, that's easy. Not a lot Five of minutes. For, sorry, Bob. Not a lot of minutes for Chris Lewis here in the first half. Kirkwood with a miss. Sister with a rebound. Dartmouth will push it. And a chance to draw even or take the lead. Knight looking for the lead. And he gets it with a three point field goal. Dartmouth 18 17. Tommy Amaker now will take a 30 second timeout. Guard them on the perimeter. Don't let him shoot threes. But if Chris Knight is successful inside and outside like that, going to be tough to guard. Foul situation, Dartmouth with six, Harvard with three, so Crimson will be shooting on the next uh, free throw. Forbes went one way, came back the other end. The freshman from Folsom, California, gives the Crimson the lead back. Good move by Forbes, but Chris Knight can't let him turn to his shooting hand so easily. Only averages 2.4 a game as a field goal early on here. So we approach nine minutes to play in the first half. So Stair has Barry in the corner to the right. Foy comes back up. So Stair, long range shot, no good. Harvard, long rebound of the pass. Barry, when it stole it, comes back the other way. So Stair inside with a left hand for two. And what a transition that was. He might be my favorite player. He just works so hard. And he's a crowd favorite too. Dartmouth foul put Harvard at the free throw line here. And there's your guy, Ian Sister, coming up with a foul there and just kind of, his arms got wrapped around Danilo Juricic. Definitely a foul on Ian. Crowd didn't like it, but as much as I hate to admit it, the officials were right. <laughs> Here's the other freshman who's been playing uh, significant minutes for Dartmouth this year, Taurus Samuels comes back into the ball game. Chris Lewis returning for Harvard along with Corey Johnson. Well, Harvard just keeps bringing reserves. They had a 20 man roster yeah. that was handed to me earlier this week and I, I don't think I've ever seen that. Just, again, again, two of their guys have, have, have not played this year because of the injuries. Those talented uh, juniors, Aiken and Towns. They can just keep bringing wave after wave after you. That's the front end of the one and one. Again, we'll see if that becomes a problem for Harvard tonight. 
Big Green by one. Both Dartmouth freshmen on the floor right now with 11 Slackert and one Samuels. Try to cut for the ball was Foy. And Knight took the chance and it did not pay off. Tough play, tough to thread the needle there. Chu Zhang in the front court. They lob inside. Lewis to the cutter, threw it too strong. Samuels came away with the ball, and Chu Zhang's just committed foul number two for Harvard. Just too wild with the basketball there and the turnover. And that usually gets a reaction from the coach. And a good foul probably because Torres was going to have a breakaway. Friedman will replace Juzang. 2019 Dartmouth by one. Samuels working right side freshman against freshman there. Knight looking to create a little space but he's working against a tough defender in Chris Lewis. And Knight traveled with it. Penn, who was predicted to finish second in the conference, now has two losses, both to Princeton. If you're Dartmouth, you're thinking, boy, if we can pull off an upset here today and knock Penn off, we're just giving ourselves a, a, a clearer path to the Final Four. Bassey, no good. Rebound, Big Green. Dartmouth leads 2019. Late in the uh, first half, Princeton beat Penn today, 62-53. And Princeton sweeps their two games with Penn. <laughs> and someone had told me Princeton might be down. Doesn't There's appear Foy. so. Barry for three. Put it in the book. First of the game for 15, Brendan Barry. That is money in the bank when he's wide open. Come back the other way. Some trouble with the ball. Bassey loses it. Dartmouth with a break. And Rye traveled with it, trying to find somebody. The foot went down before he got rid of the ball. And that's a bad decision by James Foy. He's coming down the middle of the floor of the basketball, and he throws it to a big out on the wing to handle the ball. He's got to push the ball at least to the top of the key, if not to the foul line. Let the lanes fill and play it out the way it's supposed to be. Instead, he put Aaron in a bad situation. Juricic comes over to Kirkwood. Inside Lewis, working against Knight, and he yep. traveled with it. Give it right back. Harvard with six turnovers. Dartmouth with seven. I looked over at Coach Amaker. He was shaking his head. Yes, he agreed with the call. It was the right call. Talk about salt of the earth. I spoke with Tommy Amaker for about ten minutes before the pregame, and he's just an extremely nice guy. Rye for three, and it's good. Dartmouth starting to heat it up from long range. The lead is ballooned to seven on an eight nothing run. Friedman gives it up. Slacker was thinking about taking it in. He tells Barry, I've got it. Really good transition defense. Knight. Slacker, another three. Wow. You can't help against and get down in the paint and help on defense against these perimeter shooters. They'll kill you from outside. Dartmouth up to five for 11 from three point range. Lead is up to 10. Lewis to his right. Rye with the rebound. Everybody's making threes on this Dartmouth team. They make one here, there'll be a timeout in a hurry. They'll go under 10 on the clock. Foy down the lane. 13 nothing run. Under five to go in the first half. Kirkwood, that's a three-pointer. He is one of the best freshmen in the country. No question about it. Averaging 10 again, that was his 20th three. Friedman takes the ball away from Barry, and Harvard will get two right back on the long pass to Kirkwood. Good play by Friedman to set that up. 
Harvard answers with five straight. Brandon Barry. Coach McLaughlin wanted to time out there after that three and didn't get it. Want to get some subs in the game. There's six guys at the table right now. Lewis against Knight. He had two tries at it, and a crowd feeds right into the emotions of that miss. That is amazing that Chris Lewis missed those two point blank shots. He's missed three in a row from point blank. Mark. The defense should not help down. It's got to be in the scouting report. Let the bigs play defense on any post pass that goes in, but do not allow Dartmouth to shoot threes, and that's what's happened. And a big game for Dartmouth. Not in great shape tonight. Couple fouls early for Adrees Jackson and Aaron Rye. Will Emery, the 6'9 junior, unable to play tonight. Five on the clock, Jackson up top. <laughs> Man, another three goes down. And Harvard saying, what do we need to do? And if he hits those, it'll be a very long ride back to Boston tonight for the Already Harvard Crimson Tide. Already seven threes for the Big Green. Dries Jackson has made 22 of them this year. Double dribble. Well, you know Harvard will make a run before the game's out, but if you're Dartmouth, you're just trying to capitalize on all this momentum and obviously emotion that is built into this run. Approaching three minutes to go in the first half. In Hanover, the Ivy opener, Dartmouth and Harvard. Jackson will give it up. And Knight coming in. It seems as if Harvard's had a lot of turnovers, but Dartmouth has actually turned the ball over one more time in the game than Harvard has, 9-8. to eight. And most of those turnovers have come from the bigs. Trying to dribble a little bit too much, trying to make a play, going to the basket. Dartmouth with a 13-7 edge in rebounds. That's been a big factor early on. A surprise for sure. Juzang for the Harvard Crimson to Kirkwood. It's guarded over there by Samuels. Dribbles into a tough spot. Comes back out. They do find the open player out of the corner, but a three-point field goal. Does not go for Robert Baker, giving Dartmouth a chance to build on the 13-point lead. Torres. Late first half. Knight. And that's just Torres breaking down the defense. Great look. Double figures for Chris Knight. 39-24, Forbes scoring in a foul. Boy, not much there. Brendan I can't wait Barry, to look at this one. Brendan Barry's second foul. It's 39-26. Matt Levine said he got hit in the head as he went to the basket, which obviously would be a foul if that was the case, but Brendan Barry and Ian Sister and everybody else who was out there was going into their best Kevin McHale imitation, saying, what, me? I didn't foul anybody. It's a big three-point play, though, for Harvard. Forbes has five, two field goals, and now the free throw. Dartmouth by a dozen, approaching two minutes to go. Samuels will face just the token pressure. Rye nearly lost the ball and decided to take it right to the hole. I think it was a good decision. He just didn't finish it. Juzang the other way. This just in, he's really good. 10 point game. Night in, night out. This is what you get in the Ivy League. The winning on the road is very important. Chris Knight is building quite a resume for this evening. 41 29, and he's got a dozen. Knight Dartmouth's leading score at 15-3 a game. Big Green will come away with a rebound off that miss. Let's talk about, you know, that Harvard defense. You said, you know, keep a lot of opponents near 60. Dartmouth's sitting at 41 here right. in the first half. Yeah, there's going to be a nice halftime talk in the Harvard locker room about their defense. Knight looking for something. Oh, it finds to stare up top. Oh, boy. Again, they double down, Bob. 
In the post on Chris Knight. It was a great find outside. Kirkwood. Backside Bassey, Juzang, guarded up top by Knight. 10 on the clock, 26 and a half. Juzang lost it, and it was Knight who knocked it away, and now Knight to try to finish. Oh, oh. oh he missed the layup. Harvard will hold for the last shot. Well, remember that, could have been a 17 point lead. We'll see what kind of swing it is. And Kirkwood with five. Wants the three. No good. Follow up won't count and Dartmouth has a 15 point lead at the intermission. Well I was gonna say it would be so big for Dartmouth to maintain at least a double digit lead going into the locker room. And that was when they were up 12, they were able to extend it out to 15. They gotta be feeling ecstatic about the way they played this first half. First conference game, but I got a feeling that that's what Dave McLaughlin and his club knows that this is a must win. Dartmouth Tough pass to start things here. And Dartmouth with a turnover, and they did turn it over nine times in the first half. Churchic. No good, and the big green will come back out with it as Harvard quickly went into shooting mode there. A sigh of relief from the Dartmouth coaching staff. Dartmouth with eight made threes in that first half. How many will they get in the second half? In other words, what will the defense be like for the Crimson? Six on the clock, Foy, good. With the left hand, nothing but net. Just a cool customer. I like his game as well. The a scorer too. Biggest lead of the night for the big green. And there's two for the big guy, Lewis. Well, you know that's gonna be what they try to do all half, go right to Lewis. They gotta get to the free throw line, getting the bonus early in the second half, Crimson tied to. Brendan Barry for two. All the points don't come from behind the circle for Barry. Harvard cannot even come close to matching the big green. They've got to have some shutdowns. Lewis with a board. Sestera near steal. Well, Juzang wanted to make the extra pass. Ian just got in the passing lane. A ball fake there, Ian goes flying by and then either one of them have the look. And Harvard comes in with the ball. Bassey to his right, goes by the hoop, gets stuffed by Knight and Adris Jackson has the ball. And Chris Knight is coming of age right here. Sophomore from Madison, Wisconsin, big for the Dartmouth College Big Green with the ball there, gives to Foy. Adres Jackson. Everything Dave McLaughlin is calling off his card is working for the Big Green, huh? That's just great execution. If they're gonna overplay you, you gotta go backdoor. Adres did the nice backdoor cut and a great feed as well. Big Green by 19, Lewis blocked by Knight. And Foy has the ball in frustration. I think starting to set in a little bit here for the Crimson. Barry able to catch up with the ball before it goes out of bounds there. Under 10 on the clock. Got to hurry. Came up short and Knight drew the foul. And you get the clock said two. I'll bet you David McLaughlin inside is just bursting with pride in the way his team has come out in the Ivy League opener. I mean, let's face it. The media poll had him finishing eighth. Harvard with 137 points in the media poll. Dartmouth with only 21. And there's still 17.08 to go. But Dartmouth has sent a message right now to the rest of the Ivy League. Harvard trying to find a lineup that can work. They bring three in, including Noah Kirkwood. Wes Slacker back in for Foy for the big green. 
Right, Knight gets one out of two, and the Dartmouth lead is 20 at 51-31. And we can't, you know, understate the fact that Seth Towns and Bryce Aiken haven't played yet either for this Harvard club, but they had a great non-conference schedule in their own right coming in. Preseason, pre-Ivy League season. Juzang, and that's a three-pointer. We'll see how fast Harvard can erase what is a tw what was a 20-point deficit, now down to 17. Knight takes the ball. And this time, Dartmouth, they content to run a little bit of clock. And Ian Sister, the beneficiary of the perfect pass. Well, the defender followed Ian around that fake handoff, and when he did, he was put at his mercy. Bassey only one back. Well, they landed on Adrice Jackson, but no foul call, huh? Lots of contact. It is Dartmouth ball. Thought there might be a chance that we would see Harvard's Bryce Aiken tonight. He has not played yet. Adris Jackson gets to nine, and Dartmouth has a 21-point lead on Harvard. Chu Zhang, he's been the hot shooter for the Crimson. Timeout Tommy Amaker, and that'll take us to a break with the score. Dartmouth 55 and Harvard 37 at Dartmouth. Dartmouth. It's Chris Knight, fifth in the Ivy League in scoring. But they're getting balanced scoring, and that's what they're going to need. They do need Chris Knight to finish in the top five of the Ivy League scoring by the end of the year, but they also need balanced scoring. Right now they have four players teetering in double figures. They have two in double figures now, and a couple more like to join the party here for the Big Green. If you get that kind of balance all year long, Dave McLaughlin will be so happy, so ecstatic with his club, and they'll put some wins on the board. Foy 10, Rye 21, bringing the ball up for Dartmouth. We have a Harvard foul on number 20, Justin Bassey. And that'll bring us to the under 16 media timeout of the second half. And it's still 55-37, Dartmouth. Pedal to the metal here. You cannot let up offensively. You gotta continue to do what you've been doing. Get the backdoor cuts. And here's the change of defense with a little bit of a scramble. Man, look out. See how Dartmouth handles this now. You can't panic against it. You gotta use good pass fakes. All right, Knights lost the dribble. Give and go with Foy. They find Rye in the corner. And a foul underneath. See what Matt Smith has as he comes out. 20 on Harvard. Bassey's Boy, that's third person. That's a close one right there. We're looking at the replay. Almost in position, if not in position for the call. Harvard didn't get it. 20 on the clock for the big green. Foy off the inbound. Dartmouth still looking for a made three-pointer in the second half, but points have come rather easily inside. Don't have to shoot the three. If he made that, they would have needed a new roof for the arena. Bassey working against Slacker, dribbled right into Knight. Oh, I don't know about that call. I do not like that call at all. That looked like a clean kind of put steal. Put the ball into Knight and, and pushed him away. Yeah, he, the official can c try to defend that one all he'd like. I didn't see it. Neither did David McLaughlin, the Dartmouth coach. Sister for Slackert for the big green. I think Coach McLaughlin's intestines turned inside out. His hamstring got pulled a little bit. He threw his foot up in the air. <laughs> hey, one out of two, good foul. That's where Harvard's been. Three out of six for the game. Dartmouth by 17. 15 minutes to play. Barry. Aaron Rye, look at the elevation on that shot. He had to go over Welsh, that's not an easy shot. Juzang and one. Impossible switch there as Aaron Rye went over on Juzang and 
Juzang just went to work. Third foul on Aaron Rye. Christian Juzang at the line, a 76.7% free throw shooter. Best on Harvard. It counts. That's just living right, right there. That thing hit the top of the backboard, came down in. Dartmouth 57, Harvard 41. Rye comes back over to Foy. Last year, Harvard won by 10 in Cambridge, and they won by five here, erasing a Dartmouth lead. You don't see that very often. Only the second three-point miss of the game for Brendan Barry. Two out of four. Welsh for three. And Dartmouth fortunate there. The open guy had the shot. This should be Knight. Slams at home. Dartmouth 59. Harvard 41. Well, Welsh went for the steal. There was no backside help. And Knight made him pay and a good lob pass in. Down to 10 on the clock for Harvard. Dartmouth is led by as many as 21. Juzang able to rattle it in. He has 18. That's the pure score. in the second half. Yeah, he's something else. He can get to the basket. He can shoot the three. He's been fantastic tonight. He has 11 of Harvard's 14 points in the second half. Which is not necessarily a good thing. Oh. Chris Lewis has the only other field goal. He's at the scorer's table waiting to come in now. Dartmouth foul to 10, James Foy, and now Lewis is in, along with Rio Haskett, the sophomore. Well, they're doing a much better job, Harvard is, at defending the three-point line in the second half, which was an emphasis before the game started. Eight threes in the first half for Dartmouth. And Harvard has gotten out on the shooters here in the second. Three fouls each way. Possession arrow goes towards Harvard. And a game Dartmouth leads by 16. Lewis has his third field goal, and it's 59-45. You're going to see a whole lot of Chris Lewis offensively. And it's a precarious spot in the game. You've got to be very careful if you're the Big Green. 7-2 run for Harvard. They've knocked five points off the big Dartmouth lead. And another turnover for the Big Green. In tennis, that's called an unforced error. That's what that was right there for the Big Green offensively. I mean, yes, pressure defense by Harvard, but that's just giving the ball away. Harvard will spread the floor here with the offense. Dartmouth playing matchup man to man. To Zhang, oh. long pass, but Rye landed out of bounds with it. Now the clock says 30. I think they're going to have to look at that. Harvard last year went to the Ivy League championship game. They lost in that to Penn, ended up playing in the NIT. A year ago, 12 and 2 in the Ivies, 7 and 0 at home, 5 and 2 on the road. Yeah, and they're in danger of losing one here, 2018-19 campaign. It'll be a tough start to drop one here, but you know they're going to get their troops back, and this one's not over yet. As Lewis gets them within 12, 59-47. Dartmouth had a 21-point lead at one point in this game. Can't Big panic. Just Big Green just need to continue to play offense, right? Pedal to the metal is what you said during the break. Exactly. Don't panic. Chris Knight went out before the media timeout. And they're trying to get him as much of a break. They got lucky there that they didn't turn it over. But they're trying to get Chris as much of a break as they can until a couple more minutes goes by to get him back into the game, probably for the remainder of the game. He's only sat out a few minutes of today's game. Boy, almost a steal by Kirkwood there. 
Sister inside, blocked. If that's on Rye, that's his fourth for the Big Green. And that's just being in too much of a hurry in that case offensively for the Big Green. But I guess with the shot clock going down, Ian had to. Good help defense by the Crimson Tide. So here comes Knight for Aaron Rye. Again, Dartmouth does not have big guy Will Emery available tonight. Foul's not a big situation for either team in terms of team fouls, but obviously for Aaron there, four for him. Hemson with a three would get this under 10. Kirkwood, it came up short, Foy with a rebound. See if Dartmouth now has an offensive play to answer. Great night back in the game, working against Lewis. Got to go to work, Chris. Ooh. Lost the ball. And Harvard in transition. This is where they can be really good. And Chris well, Juzang gets to 20, and it's 59 49. Timeout, big timeout. One of the things that just happened, I don't know if we could see the last replay on the steal when Chris had the ball. Adrice Jackson brought his man back over next to Chris Knight when he was trying to back his way in, and his man was able to get his hand in there and help steal the basketball. Once Chris is going to work in the post, you want to let him go to work. The spacing has to be right offensively, Bob, and it wasn't right. His man came back over into the equation, and they were able to get steal, and subsequently on the other end, an easy layup. Dartmouth women and Harvard will open up the Ivy League season for the squads next Saturday in Cambridge, and then they'll play here on the 26th. We'll be back with you that night. Good crowd here tonight. Nice to see, and the Ivy League opener, and if Dartmouth continues to play well, there'll be a lot more of them back. Foy and Barry, Knight, Slackert, and Sister for Dave McLaughlin's Big Green. We talked about how Seth Towns and Bryce Aiken's not here for Harvard, but Jillian Smith, a normal starter, isn't here either. Off the mark for Barry. For Dartmouth. Dartmouth, eight threes, eight three-pointers in the first half, none here in the second half. We've played ten minutes. Well, they say you live by the three, you die by the three, and see if they can hold on. Kirkwood, that's an offensive foul. That's an easy call. Right there for Gary Pacino to make. Yeah, he knew it. He's a composed competitor, though, for a freshman. I mean, you look out for this Harvard team. What is it, one senior on this roster? Uh, two, one who really, one who plays Two, a lot. yes. So Corey Johnson's the, the one senior who's played a lot. I knew the full court pressure was coming. We talked about it. Barry's the guy to break it. As Dartmouth flashes quickly into the half court. Oh, Foy oh. takes the pass. Nope, didn't finish it. Foul Dartmouth on the rebound on Knight. They got him for a second. Got to make that one. That's tough. You miss the layup, and Chris Knight gets his second foul. The green by 10. Harvard, the preseason pick in the Ivy League. Haskett, no good. Harvard rebound, Kirkwood, no good. Barry comes out with it. Dartmouth did not have numbers, so Barry wisely took his time to bring it across the timeline. That's foul. Foy out of the corner. Dartmouth 0 for 4 from 3 in the second half. Lewis working against Knight. He's missed a few easy ones inside, hasn't he? Yeah, that is another one from 2 feet away, if not closer. There's about 4 of those for Chris Lewis. Solid defense by Chris Knight, though, down in the post. 
Dartmouth has only two points since the 15 minute mark. Slackert. That'll be two. And a pretty move. Well, this just in, he's a good looking freshman too in his own right. Poised, shot clock going down. Uses the up and under move, got the head fake going. Fans loved it. 61-49. Eight minutes to play second half. <laughs> Chu Zhang, it caught the back iron and a rebounding foul on Dartmouth. 7.52 to play in the second half. Dartmouth leads by a dozen and this is the Ivy League on Nesson. Hey, the atmosphere is festive. Why shouldn't it be a 12 point Dartmouth green for the home team? They're trying to hold on against a very, very strong Harvard squad. It's been about two and a half minutes since Dave McLaughlin used a 30 second timeout with Dartmouth up 59-49. Thought that was a great timeout by coach. Dartmouth went two and a half minutes. Only scored two, but Harvard didn't score. Welsh will get a field goal here and it's 61-51, big green. 7.39 to go in the second half. Design set, they were looking for Juzang to shoot the three. Welsh though, was gonna be the second option in there for. Tommy Amaker's club, and that's what they went to, and Henry made him Big look like a genius that he is on the sideline. Big Green with two freshmen on the floor right now, both over on that left side with Slacker 11 and one Samuels, and Knight with a finish. What a great move. He knows he has the speed advantage. He goes and attacks the basket against Henry Welch. Chris Knight has 17 for the Big Green. Seven minutes to go. Win would give Dartmouth 10 wins on the season. Johnson, no good. But a new shot clock at Harvard has the ball. Johnson with Slacker coming with the pressure. It's no good. I think Chris Knight got fouled going up for that rebound, and they didn't call it. Five fouls on the big green, four on Harvard. Samuels on the drive and uses gravity to get it to fall. It's a great substitution getting Torres in. He had an awesome first half. He got to the rim a couple of times and helped his teammates out, but he can get to the rack. He can break down the defense with a dribble. That's what they need. Bassey, good end one, and a foul on Ian Sister for the big green. Chris Knight, 17 points tonight as a season high of 23. Ironically, that came in the loss to Quinnipiac. To me, that's a play on. Good move by the offense. Defense was vertical in a good way. Let him play. It's good score. I didn't like that call. And Ian Sister talking with Matt Levine there about the play. About a calm, polite conversation will not get you in trouble. That's true. Harvard 4-7 of seven from the line, and now 4 of 8, but they get the offensive rebound, and Lewis should have gone right back up with it, right? Here it is, and there you go. Two points, 10 for Lewis. That was such a brick. It bounced so far outside that Lewis was like, well, thank you, I'll take this, and then he scores it. Dartmouth, by the way, only 3 of 4 from the line in the game. So four free throws for the big green, 8 for Harvard. And we may see a few down the stretch here, but we're down to 5.45 left now. Offensive foul on Sister. And the look tells you everything. Good defense by the Crimson Tide, getting good position, sliding over. So Foy will come in for Sister. 65 55, big green by 10. Four fouls on Ian. Teams have had 12 days. 10 days to think about this game. They'll have two weeks to think about the next one between these two. Kirkwood carries it inside, and the defense by Slacker was terrific. Dartmouth can't save it in the corner. It's going to be Harvard ball. Well, Kirkwood has a... And again, they reset the shot clock. Uh, Kirkwood has an obvious physical advantage over West, but West denies him at the point of attack right underneath the rim. And I don't know how there's a... 
they're gonna have new to look, shot clock here. Yeah, they're going to have to look at the replay to see if uh, they can determine how much time was actually left on the clock. Because West really did not have possession of the basketball. Job rebounding, getting to the glass defensively. 14 on the shot clock is what they went with. So Sister with four fouls, Aaron Rye with four fouls for the big green. And now another big green foul. And this one is on Brendan Barry. Uh, no, let me correct that, it's on Chris Knight, that's his third. And to me, that's... Ticky tacky. 523 left. Lewis at the free throw line for the Crimson. No good, rebound Foy. How did that not go in? Yeah, I know. Dartmouth leading by 10. Slacker, they work it around. Brendan Barry, eight points tonight, relatively quiet offensive night. He's taken only six shots, now seven. And that, a three point field goal. That could be a dagger. That's three. the first made three for Dartmouth in the second half. And the big green out to a 13 point lead again. Harvard has not been able to significantly cut into it and now under five to play. Lewis, boy that was a, some contact there with Knight. It'll end up with a Kirkwood finish and a timeout taken by Tommy Amaker. Yeah, you gotta clean up that rebound if you can. Kirkwood just physically a beast in there. Is that coming in? We're right now at 68. Add 12, just one other round. 4.30 to go in this one, Dartmouth by 11. 68-57, Slackert finds Rye, who's playing with four fouls. Try to get it long cross-court pass to Brendan Barry, and there's a Dartmouth foul. Well, Aaron left his feet to make the pass, and you gotta stay down on the floor, and that's gonna be his fifth. They'll use this time they have to get a substitution in and taking Aaron out, imagine either Torres Samuels or Ian Sestere will go in, and it'll be Torres. Yeah, Aaron Rye had fouls column tonight for him. 4.14 to go. Rye out of the game. Dartmouth again with the two freshmen on the floor right now. Jazang. Dartmouth converges on him. And now with a right hand off the window, Justin Bassey gets to five points. And Harvard is under 10 for the first time in a while. 68-59. Milk the clock, get a great look. Harvard has the luxury of giving up a couple of fouls without sending Dartmouth to the free throw line, but you gotta use the shot clock. Barry has Foy open, bingo! There's another dagger. All led by Brendan Barry. Juzang looking for the answer. Rebound Lewis for Harvard. Kirkwood comes back around to Juzang. 3.10 to go, Harvard trails by 12. Bassey, little contact with Barry, and that's going to be a foul on Brendan Barry. And Justin Bassey will put his uh, number 20, Justin Bassey, at the free throw line here. You'd mentioned in that last break, Tommy Abaker supporting, you know, for instance, the tournament going to 80 teams. You know, that doesn't mean that the Ivy League is going to get a second team in the tournament. It certainly doesn't, but there's still so many teams, I think, de deserving of getting in for the NCAA tournament. It was refreshing to, to hear him say that. Bassey made only one of two. Harvard has struggled from the line tonight. Made less than 50%, so the Dartmouth lead is 11. Facing the pressure, you knew it was going to be intense, and it was. Barry with 15. Boy, Buck in here would be huge, and Barry is gonna get fouled. That's just the fifth foul of the second half on Harvard. 
Rio Haskett commits it. Well, they can be so aggressive, having a couple of fouls to give here. Shot clock only going back to 20 seconds. They've run some good sets from the baseline. How will Dartmouth play on the road in the Ivy League is a big question. Early on, we have the game here tonight, two weeks from tonight at Harvard, and then the first four after that are here at Lead Arena. Dartmouth's going to have to play three of the last four weekends away. Night. Big basket for the big green, and he'll go to the line. And another great baseline inbound set from Dartmouth. Just patient, got the roll through by Chris Knight and a good pass. Execution at its finest. At the half we had talked about what Dartmouth, what number Dartmouth would need to be on for Harvard to have a chance, and we had said 66. Dartmouth is, is well past that now. This guy's a big part of it right here. Chris Knight, what a game. Closing in on his season high, 2.40 to go and the lead is 14. That's his third block. So he's climbing the ladder in that department amongst the Ivy League leaders. He came into tonight with 49 career blocks. Inside, Bassey. Sister has the four fouls, defensively in a little trouble. Knight will commit the foul there, and now he's up to four. It's a good give up foul though. Bassey had a chance for an easy two and got to make him earn him from the free throw line. You can feel the sense of urgency for Harvard Crimson having to get some shots off in a hurry down by 14. Bassey has struggled. Two of six from the line in the game. Chris Knight, fourth time this year, is at 20 points. One out of two. And Harvard's down 13 with only 2.25 to go. So we'll go to the full court pressure. Barry tells Torres Samuels he's got it. Brings it across the timeline. Comes back to the freshman from Oceanside, California. Brendan Barry's one cool customer. Barry distributes, Foy. Oh, but puts this one away. He's hit some big ones. Couple of threes late for James Foy and Dartmouth has a 77-61 lead. And they're gonna beat Harvard here tonight. Big Green having to play their first two Ivy games against Harvard might be the right time to be playing the Crimson. Uh, absolutely. This club may be very, very good come a couple of weeks. Ooh, Barry. Ooh, what a Saved time by out. Coach McLaughlin there. I'm not sure Ian didn't dribble the basketball right on the half court line. Yeah, but I think Coach got the time right. out first. So 125 left. We'll leave it here 77 to 61. Harvard has won nine of their last 10 at lead. And quite honestly, they've done really well in. Ivy League openers under Tommy Amaker. Well, 4.58 mark, Brendan Berry hit a three under six seconds on the shot clock. James Foy has hit two threes down in the shot clock on the left side of the court on kickout passes where, the, you know, they just found him wide open and, it, you know, confidently stroking it from outside. And James Foy, a couple of huge shots in this second half. i so impressed with the minutes by Torres Samuels and Wes Slacker. They have also come up big. Rick Bender, the Dartmouth Sports Information Director, pointing out that Harvard has won this Ivy opener 11 years in a row. 32nd year in a row that these teams have started Ivy play against one another. And regardless of what happens here tonight, they're still the odds on favorite. Yeah, Harvard foul with 122 left, 77-61 Dartmouth. Yeah, Big Green will be able to celebrate this for a little bit. We'll have two weeks. Two weeks. It's it's one of those, wow, you know, this is a great victory for us. In two weeks we get to go to Harvard. 
Yeah, a little more confidence, though. They got a shot here at a double-digit win. Rebound Harvard. Lewis got a hurry. Three and double figures for the Crimson. Juzang, 20. Lewis now with 12. Noah Kirkwood, the freshman, with 11. 101 left to play. Game plan was solid. They went back door. They knew they were going to be overplayed. I think the preseason helped them. Everybody guarded the three point line so, you know, with such concentration against the Dartmouth squad. And they knew that was going to happen coming into league play. And they were disciplined. They went back door when they were supposed to. I have to give you a number here on shooting and watch Samuels here. Two more for Dartmouth. Speaking of back door. 79-63. Dartmouth is 32 of 47, 68.1% from the floor tonight. Samuels with a block. He's played great. He has played great. And they played a smaller lineup against Harvard tonight for the most part, Bob. So if you're the rest of the Ivy League, you're looking at this and, you know, Sestere, Barry, Foy, Slacker, Samuels. They, I mean, four in, four guards, one in, in uh, Chris Knight. Maybe that's the magical elixir. And keep in mind, Jillian Smith on the bench. We watch this team throughout their preseason non-conference schedule. We knew they were picked eighth in the Ivy League, and I said to you, I said, I just don't see it happening. I see this team finishing higher than eighth. Now, you, you don't want to get too excited here, but this is one heck of a win. It's one. 81 points on Harvard. Foy up onto the table and into the crowd. And that saved the possession for the Big Green. Fans are on their feet. We're dribbling out. It's the biggest Dartmouth win in years. It's a standing ovation at Lead Arena. When was the last time you saw this? Incredible. 81-63 in favor of the Dartmouth College Big Green. Dartmouth tonight led by Chris Knight. 20 points for Knight. 13 for Ian Sestere. 11 for Brendan Barry. 10 for James Foy. Adrice Jackson added 9. Harvard 